Yeah, hey guys, Steph here. In this video, I'm going to compare creating classes in one, two, three, four, five different languages. One of the things that I discuss on a regular basis is how it's so important to learn the foundations, the fundamentals, the core of whichever or whatever programming language you decide to learn at first because everything comes off of that. With that super solid foundation, everything else is gonna be easy. And in fact, learning other languages is gonna be easy. Now, like everything else I teach and I talk about on this channel is all from lots of hard earned nerd experience going back to the 90s, business and coding experience. So I digress here. So now what I'm gonna show you is how you can create a simple object in the five programming languages. Because one of the things I always say is that once you learn one programming language, well, modern programming language, you will have learned pretty much 95% of all the programming languages. So let's start off at the top. So I got one, Python. And we create a class with Python. Number two, Java. We create a class with Java. Now, just in case you don't know, a class is a way of organizing your code in any object-oriented based language. There are many, many, many out there, including Python, Java, PHP, Swift, Ruby, C Sharp, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, to create objects in object-oriented programming, you use something called a class. Now, I'm not gonna teach object-oriented programming in this video, but I just want you to show you how similar these five different languages are. So first one, I got Python, then I got Java, then I got PHP, everybody's favorite language, just joking there. Uh, I'm not disparaging PHP. For freelancers, if you wanna do freelance development and programming, I say do PHP. Uh, JavaScript. Now, JavaScript actually, though it acts object-oriented, technically nerd speaking, it's a prototypical language. Although I think the latest version of, of the JavaScript language might actually be pure object-oriented. I'm not sure. But anyway, but traditionally JavaScript is prototypical. I haven't looked at it that in a while at, in terms of getting that nerdy and deep. But anyway, for all intents and purposes, JavaScript does act like an object-oriented language, so don't worry about it. We'll get into this a few seconds later. And then you got C-sharp, which is Microsoft's answer to Java. So uh, yeah, let's look at this. So let's go back to the top Python. You see, to create a class, classes are like the templates, the cookie cutters. You use classes to create objects in object-oriented programming. Anyway, so... To create a class in Python, we use the class keyword, and we say we're creating a class, and we're gonna call it a class automobile, and we do all our stuff, boom. Look at Java, look at that. Now, the code is different, the syntax is different, because there are differences between the languages, don't get me wrong, but the key point to take away is that with Python and with Java, they, all, they both use the class keyword to create objects. And then with PHP, look at that, they use a class keyword to create objects. Look at uh, Java. Now, JavaScript's the odd one or the odd man out. As I said, it's a prototypical language. It does not use a class keyword to create objects. It actually uses a function. Though JavaScript does not use a class keyword, conceptually, it is the same as the other languages. All right, and in C Sharp, here we go again. We use the class keyword, right? So the way it typically works with object-oriented programming languages, most of the time, they have the class keyword. Class keyword with, with uh, Python, class keyword with Java, class keyword with PHP, you get the idea. Now, yes, there are several differences. There's no question, but the key to take away from this is that in all these situations, all these different languages, rather, you're using the class keyword. So if you learn how to create classes in Python, if you've never written Java code and you look at some Java code, you're going to see, oh, look, class. Oh, I guess we're creating a class here. And because you've learned classes in Python, you'll know a lot about how classes work and behave in Java, although they are different. And again, I would say these languages in terms of concepts are about 95% or more the same, maybe even 97%, depending. Let me give you another example of how similar things are. Now, in object-oriented programming, you have this idea of a constructor, constructor uh, is a part of your class code that is fired off when the code is 
activated, if you will. Again, I'm trying to avoid nerd terms. So in Python, we have this code here that is our constructor. And what a constructor does, it's just sort of like gets everything up and running. Again, I'm not trying to teach you object oriented programming. What I'm trying to show you is that the concepts are shared across all these languages. So here's your constructor in Python. In uh, Java, here's your constructor here. In PHP, here's your constructor here. Well, in PHP, they even use the word construct. That's the keyword construct, right? And in uh, JavaScript, uh, JavaScript, uh, this is a constructor right here. Boom, boom. So they just do it this way. C sharp, the constructor I recall is always has the same name as your class. So here, this is the constructor right here. The point is you have another concept, constructors, which is shared across five different programming languages. So when you learn and understand what the point of a constructor is, and they're the same, the point of a constructor or constructor is the same uh, across all these languages and any other object-oriented language that I'm aware of. The class keyword is the same, has the same purpose, and does the same thing for all these languages. So there you go. You learn the basics of Python really well. You learn those foundations, those core principles. It will go a long way to helping you not only explore Python all over the place, because Python is very vast, like all these other languages, but will help you to understand programming in general, regardless of the language.